All right, guys. So we have spent the last few weeks learning a lot of stuff, putting a lot of stuff into our brain. We're going to spend some time for these next couple of days um, revisiting and just practicing and getting really good. So you guys know how we do in a classroom where we first learn the thing and it's really hard when we're first learning it, but then we do a ton of practice. So right now what we're about to do is just get really confident and comfortable in the stuff that we've learned. I know a lot of us have gotten some right answers, um, but this is going to be a good chance for us to like just really lock in those skills. And you guys know how um, important it is that we do that. So first, let's just review really quick recap um, of what we're looking at when we look at parts of a circle. Um, I mean, we know that a circle is a geometric figure where all points are equidistant, meaning they are the same distance from the center. So every point on this ring um, of the circle is the same distance from the middle of the circle. We know that circumference is the distance around the circle or the distance around the edge. Also, this ring is also known as the circumference because every point on here is on the circumference. Radius is the distance from the center of the circle to any point on the circumference or the distance from the middle of the circle to the edge. Um, diameter is the distance between two points um, that are on the opposite ends of the circle. So think about the diameter being the distance from this point right here all the way through the center to the other point. So diameter is distance across the longest part of the circle through its center. Um, you can think of diameter as the line that cuts the circle in half. Um, and then a chord is a line segment that doesn't cut a circle in half. It doesn't go through the center, but it does go from one point on the circumference to another point on the circumference. Um, the things that you need to know is that pi is the ratio between a circle circumference and its diameter. Pi is a number that we use um, for finding area and circumference. Usually it is approximated to 3.14. The actual value of pi is a lot longer. Um, so you're either going to use pi as 3.14, you're going to keep it as pi, um, or you're going to round it up to three. So it's either going to be pi, 3.14, or three. Here are the um, formulas that we need for circles. So circumference is equal to pi times diameter, or circumference is equal to two pi r, or two, pi time, two times pi times radius. I like to just say two pi r or pi d. Um, so when we're solving by hand, we can substitute 3.14 for pi. When we're using a calculator, we can just multiply times pi and get like the most accurate answer that we could possibly get. We can still round those. In there is a scientific calculator. A lot of you all can use it using your phone. So I haven't answered the video yet because we're making it right now. But first example is if the diameter of the circle is nine units, if the diameter of the circle is nine units. Um, okay, so um, example one says, if the diameter of the circle is nine units, what is their circumference? Um, and in order for me all to show you all this work, I am going to uh, put a pause on this. And I am now going to switch over to my whiteboard, which I just figured out is a really cool tool that I get to use with you guys. So I'm going to try to use it now once I find it. Oh, there it is. I want to go to my whiteboard. Um, if this doesn't work, then I'll go back to, you know, doing things the regular way. But basically, um, what we're going to do is we are going to first... Put a little text box right here. And the question is asking me, if the diameter of the circle is nine units, what is the circumference? So first thing I'm going to do is write just my formulas because these are just going to live up here on the whiteboard for right now. Circumference equals pi times, uh, times diameter, or circumference equals two pi r. Two times pi times r. These are two formulas that are going to live at the top. For example one, we could use the circle. The circle is a good thing to reference, but the circle gives us a bit of information that we can use. So the circle says that the diameter is nine units, and we can use uh -oh. we can use 
what we know about that. Um, plug that in to find our circumference. So if we know that our diameter is nine and we're trying to find circumference, we can use one of these two formulas to do that. I'm looking at this formula that has circumference, pi, and diameter already. So I'm going to use that formula. First thing that I'm going to do, first thing that you should do, is take that, uh, first, write this, first write the formula, and then plug in your values. Part A of this says to use 3.14. So I'm going to substitute 3.14 for pi. And then I'm going to insert my diameter for D, which is 9. And then I do 3.14 times 9 which is 28.26. So circumference, uh, circumference equals 28.26. What are the units? And that's it for example one. Um, I am going to example two, well, not example two, but part B of example two says instead of using 3.14 to just use pi. So again, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to start with my formula so you guys can see how this makes sense each and every way. Your work should also be looking like this when you write it down. Um, I'm going to do pi, and so I'm going to leave it as pi. I'm going to do pi times my diameter, which is nine. And there's two different kinds of answers you can have here. One could be just pi with a coefficient of nine. So circumference could equal nine pi, which is the most exact answer. If you have a calculator, then you are going to do something. Um, if you have a calculator, then you're going to do something like this, um, which is basically like saying, Hmm. Wait, where's pi? Where's pi? Pi, which is this really long number, times nine. And then it's going to give me this really long number. And then you're just going to round this up to the nearest hundredths place. So I have 28.274. I'm just going to round this up to 28.27. Because that four, that the four is below five, so that we don't round that seven up to eight. So my final answer is going to be 28.27. Um, Go back to my whiteboard. The other answer that you can have C equals 28.27. So these are going to be, these would be the answers that you would put inside um, of the boxes for number one. You could either put nine pi or you could put the actual number for uh, part two. Okay, um, example two says, if the radius of the circle is four units, what is the circumference? So again, I'm gonna have to go back over here into my corner where I see, um, where I see my formulas. And I'm gonna think about which formula has what I'm looking for and one of the things that I know. I see circumference equals pi times diameter. And though this is a formula that helps me find circumference, it doesn't include radius, which is what I have um, in example two. So instead, I'm going to use this formula that is circumference equals 2 pi r. Um, so I'm going to go back inside of here. I'm going to do circumference. I'm going to write my formula. Circumference equals 2 times pi. Uh -oh, 2 times pi times r. And then I'm going to plug in all the information that I know. Two times the first example says to use 3.14 so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna substitute 3.14 for pi and instead of putting R I'm gonna put four now multiplication is commutative which means that I can do whatever order of this multiplication I want to do so for example I want to multiply two times four first so I'm gonna do two times four which is eight and I want to multiply that times 3.14 and I can either use multi-step multiplication. Let me see how that looks if I were to like draw this out on the side. Because I do want you guys to get into the habit of that. So I have three. Ooh, my handwriting is terrible. 3.14. Mm. 
3.14 times 8. <laughs> this is actually kind of weirdly cool. 4 times 8 is 32. Drop my 2, carry my 3. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 3 is 11. I drop my 1, carry my 1. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 1 is 25. So I have 2,512. No, I don't. I have two numbers behind decimals, so I'm going to put two numbers behind decimals here. My final answer is 25.12. Let me go back inside of here and just make that look nice and neat. 25.12 is my circumference. Part B says to keep the answer in terms of pi, or to solve using pi. Again, I told you guys that there's two ways you can do this. Um, way number one is by substituting your information that you have, leaving pi as it is, and then substituting your value for r, which we now know is 4. Um, and then you can, again, multiply it till you can't anymore. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times pi is what we have. Uh -oh. 8 times pi. And then our final answer could be circumference equals 8 pi. The other answer that we could use is if we, again, go into the, ca go into the calculator, So we go into the calculator and we do that pi times eight. And then we get this really long irrational number that we just round up to the nearest hundredths place, which is we're focusing on this three. That number that comes after three is two. So we wouldn't round this 25.13 up. We would just leave it at 25.13. Um, Conference equals 25.12. Uh -oh. These are the answers that you're going to put inside. Remember that when it's telling you to solve using pi, you can either put pi in your calculator and solve, or you can leave it as pi you having a coefficient, so like 9 pi, 8 pi. Um, but make sure that you're paying attention to uh, your radius. Come out of here. Make sure that you're paying attention to your radius. Make sure that you're paying attention to your diameter and that you're not putting the wrong thing in the, you're putting that, make sure you're not putting the wrong thing in the wrong equation. And that like the difference between your radius and diameter is the difference between a right and a wrong answer. So don't make that mistake. Um, double check your work, make sure that you are doing that. Also, drink more water. All right, now it's time for you to do it. <laughs> 